menace of sobriety. Just a menace. Just a menace. Hello and welcome to another episode of Menace to Sobriety Home Edition. This is a big one, man. How to change your life. This podcast right now is for anyone out there that's struggling uh, with their life at the moment and that is ready to fucking stop messing around and change their lives. Anyone out there that's um, ready for um, a personal revolution, this is for you. This is for anyone that is fed up with not making any progress or not enough progress or making progress, making a bit of progress and then getting pulled back. This is for someone that's sick of their own behavior, that's sick of themselves, that's bored of how they make other people feel, or this is for someone that's just ready to crack on, man ready for the next stage of their life. Now, who am I to give you advice on how to change your life? Well, I'll tell you who I am. I'm someone that spent the last, at least, I don't know, five years trying to change my shit, man, trying to sort myself out. And in the last eight months, I've cracked, um, cracked something. Do you know what I mean? I've changed something. Something has changed um, within my lifestyle that has, has put me in a place that I don't want to leave. Something has changed, uh, for the better in me. And, uh, I've written out all the things, all the questions that I've asked myself along the way that you can ask yourselves. I've put it in a little bit of a format here that should be easy to digest, but, um, this isn't, this, this, I spent some time writing this out. This is important to me, right? This is, this is what my life is all about. Now I am super aggressive about personal development. Right, and if someone, if I'd heard myself say that many years ago, I would have thought, "Gay," because <laughs> personal development. Who gives a fuck? Do you know what I mean? But um, I am someone. First of all, before I'm going to tell you how you can change your life, right? And if you're if you're sitting here watching this now, if I've if I've promoted this and you've come over and you're like, "Come on, give me some shit, man," because I'm fed up on where I'm at. I'm going to give you some stuff, but this ain't going to be an easy listen, and it ain't going to be an easy ride, right? In fact, the last eight months have been the tough. Well, some of the toughest, probably the toughest. I've been through some shit, and the last eight months have definitely actually been the toughest of them all. Um, because you know it means it means looking at yourself in in ways you haven't before and trust me um if you're honest you ain't gonna like what you see Uh, and it's about it's about learning how to manipulate your mind into um not manipulating you and it's ultimately it's about um fucking hard work hard work hard work not just for yourself but for those around you but before we get into that um, I'm just going to give you a little insight into my character, the type of person I used to be. Um, I used to be very selfish in regards to um, what I wanted, what I thought I deserved out of life. I had a very big victim mentality for many, many years um, for many reasons because my mum and dad broke up. I thought I was a victim from that. You know, I thought I had a tough childhood. Um you know, even if I spoke to my family, I'd say, no, I didn't have a tough, tough childhood, you know, blah, blah, whatever. But, you know, deep inside, it was tough. And, you know, uh, that I held on to that like I was a victim, like it wasn't my fault. And why did that happen? Why didn't I have a family like other kids? But, you know, um, yeah, so victim mentality that stuck with me, you know, when I lost my TV show, when I lost, when I got thrown off TV and everything went wrong for me, you know, I was the victim again. I was very pity mentality. I had a, a big pity, pity parties, pity parties in my mind. And because of that, I self-sabotaged and um, I had a big fucking fuck you button, a big self-destruct button. I don't know if anyone else has got a fuck you button, but a fuck you button is, it, it's not fuck you to other people. The fuck you button is a fuck you to yourself. I don't know if you have that button, but I certainly have that button. It's a button that I press when um, I just think, do you know what, Dan? Dan, you're doing my nutting. Fuck you, mate. I'm getting obliterated. I'm going to press this button here. I'm going to consume as much drugs and alcohol as I can. And I'm going to keep going until I'm completely on another planet. Um, and I don't know what's going on. And fuck you. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, you know, pity, pity led to self destruct. But also, my coping mechanism um, quickly became drink. Do you know what I mean? Uh, soothing myself. And um, I think a lot of us fall into that trap, especially if you're listening to this podcast. But anyway, and I was very driven. I was very driven to prove. So I, I had a lot of pity and I was driven to prove the world wrong. I, I, I My mum moved away when I was very young, 15, 16 years old. Uh, I had a point to prove that I could survive on my own. Um, 
financially, I never had any help from anyone in my life. Do you know what I mean? No one gave me, um, a, a, you know, I didn't get bought a house or, you know, given loads of money. And, and you know, even when my father died, I'd, uh, I gave my inheritance to my stepmom, you know. But um, so I had a big point to prove. So, you know, I wanted to prove to the world that I was better. And that made me quite selfish. You know, I was, I was very driven. And um, again, because of being so driven and working so hard, I wanted to reward myself. And uh, much like many of the people out there, I rewarded myself every weekend with a big smash up. Um, and that was my reward for my hard work. And, you know, it, it was worse when, when I made money, when I started making good money again. Um, I thought that, you know, a house, nice things, a car and did all that would keep the missus off my back. She could look after the kids and I could go and reward myself. Very selfish. Um, and, um, you know, ultimately, you know my story anyway, this led to the destruction of me, you know. Um, when I was angry, I drank. When I was celebrating, I drank. When I was bored, I drank. Um, and every time I drank, I, I didn't I didn't want to drink with my family. I wanted to drink with my friends. Do you know what I mean? So I wanted to be out. I wanted to be at the pub. I didn't want to be home. And um, it made me selfish and angry. And uh, the time I did spend with my family ultimately wasn't great time. It was selfish time. And I got to the point where I was just messing up so much that I was like, fuck this life, man. This ain't me. This is a version of myself I've created. This isn't me. I, I don't want to be this guy. Um, you know, and uh, I could see the future. I could see that everything I really cared about, I was going to lose. So I wanted to change it up. Um and uh, yeah, D-Day, that's what I'm going to call it. It was D-Day and we'll get into that for you. So here we go. How to Change Your Life by Dan O'Reilly, comedian, stroke philosopher, stroke lemon squeezer, stroke me inappropriately. Uh, okay, let's keep it funny. We'll keep it light. All right, first off on my list, <clears throat> the first question I want you to ask yourself on this journey on how to change your life and by the end of this podcast I hope you will have all the tools to fucking stop making excuses and crack on and make a change. First up, what do you love? That's the first question you've got to answer yourself. What do you love? What do you love? What do you love in life? What do you really love? All right, because you've got to prioritize it. The first thing you've got to work out, and I'm going to use my journey as an example here. The first thing you've got to work out is what do you love? What's important to you? What's really important to you? Now, for me, when I ask myself that question, what is going to, and this is how I try to work out the answer, you know, and this is a dark way to look at it, but I'm going to be honest with you because um, I had suicidal thoughts. I attempted to, um, well, I thought, I, didn't, I never attempted suicide. I had suicidal thoughts and I, I, I contemplated suicide at my darkest point a long time ago. And um, I, I think to myself, in the future, what would shame me so much? What would push me to that shame, um, you know, to get me that far again? You know, what could, what could really push me, you know, to, to destroy me, basically? And it, would, and it was not being a good father. That's something that I just couldn't cope with. I couldn't look back over my life, over, over my years of my life and look back and, and have my kids either sitting in front of me saying I was a bad father, that I ruined their childhood, or, um, you know, just not have a relationship with them or not see them or have damaged them. Or, you know, you see a lot of people that are damaged from, you know, they grow up and they're damaged because of what their father's done, you know, um, being absent or just making mistakes or whatever. So... You know, what do what what do you love? What do you want to prioritize? That is the most important thing. What do you love, right? And everything else now, that's the base to change your life. That's the basis of changing life. Mine was my kids and my family, my missus and my kids. That's what I love, right? That is what I love, right? So that has to be my priority, right? Now everything else comes second. Now the 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 this the, the, this is the hard bit. First of all, you 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 got to really prioritize what you love. And to me, it was my family. It wasn't the pub. It wasn't my friends. It wasn't money. It wasn't my job. Uh, although I was obsessed with my job and I was obsessed, you know, with going out. And I, I love money and, and making money and stuff like that. But what do I really love? What's important to me? And the truth is, it's my family. So that's the first thing. Uh, the second question that you got to ask yourself. What are you doing wrong? to the things you love. What are you doing wrong? What what are you doing wrong, first of all, okay? Because ultimately it's gonna affect that one thing you love. So what are you doing wrong, 
right? Now, this is a really tough one. Um, Jordan Peterson spoke about this. He said, if you want to really progress in life or if you really want to make a difference uh, or change in your life, then one night sit on the end of your bed and ask yourself, what is the one thing I'm doing in life wrong? What, what am I doing wrong? What is wrong that I'm doing? Now, for me, it was drinking drugs. That's I was doing that. That was wrong. You know, I shouldn't have been sniffing gear on a, on a Friday night and then absolutely wasted all, all weekend. Um, I shouldn't have been getting drunk and mouthy and loud and crazy. You know, um, I shouldn't have been out at the pub drinking when, when I've got two young kids at home. I shouldn't have been doing that. Um, I was being selfish, right? So what are you doing wrong? Just stop and look at yourself first of all. What are you doing wrong? Are you being are, are, are you have you got a family kids business are you a little bit older or are you younger and you should be focusing on on your work or your career or um you know are you what are you doing wrong you could be in a relationship that you shouldn't be shouldn't be in you you could be stealing or robbing or selling drugs or you could be you could be doing anything right whoever you are out there what is it that you're doing wrong because you know you're doing it wrong right so the first thing you've done is one what do I love two what am I doing wrong right if you can focus on them two things and then you can change what you're doing wrong it's going to really help you um towards treating what you what you love better and yourself right so be honest with yourself what are you doing wrong now, what are you doing wrong can go into many things as well. It can go into what are you doing wrong with your time, um, the pub, people. People's a big one. Man, there's some people that I wasted a lot of time with. There was some people that I wasted a lot of time on. There were some people that I allowed to waste a lot of my time. And there were some people that ultimately, when they're wasting my time or I'm wasting my time on them, that's time that I'm taking away from what I love, Right see how it all falls together what you're doing wrong is ultimately affecting what you love yeah so people places your environment um and things that you're doing you know what are you doing wrong now i know it's very easy for someone to turn around and say if drinking and drugs are not serving you right if you've got an unhealthy relationship with drink and drugs which I did I knew I sat on the end of my bed and I asked myself what am I doing wrong I knew exactly what it was because every time uh, I drank I was having a row with my missus every time I, I, I drank I was waking up in the morning and I was embarrassed by the things I'd done the night before or the promises I've made or you know the stupid mistakes I made or you know uh, having a come down um, becoming emotionally unstable having breakdowns I was doing it to myself, right? I was I was doing it to myself. Some some small tiny little thing would go wrong in my life and I'd have to get absolutely obliterated. You know, big events would happen in my life, like positive events and I'd have to get absolutely obliterated. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? That's what you're doing wrong and it was an affecting who I who I loved. Right. We're on the road to find out how you change your life. So you've worked out what you love, what's important to you. You've worked out the things that you're doing wrong in your life. Now what you've got to work out is who do you want to be? Who do you want to be in life? Who do you want to be? All right? I know what you're thinking. I just want to be myself. You want to be yourself. Well, well, if you if you were happy with being yourself right now, you wouldn't have got, f- what, 15, 20 minutes into this podcast listening to this because, you know, ultimately if you're unhappy, you're not happy with yourself are you who do you want to be man because how we view ourselves, I believe is the key to our happiness right our self-esteem you know our um how we view ourselves in our mind's eye how we look at ourselves, um is the key to how we treat ourselves. ultimately you know I wouldn't self-sabotage and go and get absolutely annihilated if I was happy in my own skin if I was comfortable with my life and I'll tell you something now I feel fucking comfortable right now I, I am not anxious when I go out when I walk around when I go to big events um when people come up and ask me for pictures and because I know it sounds wanky but they do and you know if 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 I see people looking at me or if I'm out at family stuff which used to make me feel awkward or I feel comfortable in my own skin and that's that's not because I've lost a bit of weight or that I'm, you know, it's because I'm proud of myself. It's as simple as that. And I'm proud of myself because eight months ago when I hit D-Day, I looked forward and I thought, who do I want to be? And I knew who I wanted to be. I wanted to be someone that was fit, 
you know, that was that was fit and strong and healthy. I wanted to be someone that was a good father, not not a good father on social media, you know, which used to be the case. You know, it, you, my social media did not match what was going on behind the scenes. Do you know what I mean? For years and years and years. I mean, don't get me wrong. We had great, we, we always had happy times. and But I only showed the happy times. I didn't show the destruction and the carnage, right? Um, you know, <laughs> I wanted to be a good father, right? A good father, healthy, and a good husband, right? That's what I wanted to be. You know, who do you want to be? That's who I want to be. And also, I want to make films, and I want to write good comedy, and I want to be a great stand-up, and I want a 28-date UK tour. One day, who would have thought it, yeah? So eight months ago, I was drunk, on a come down, um, massive bust-up, uh, depressed, you know, I can't go too much into my own personal stuff, but um, I was in a bad way. Do you know what I mean? I'd, um, you know, told the missus I wasn't going to drink and I I'd, I'd drank again and we'd had a little bit of an argument. And um, yeah, I just was like, here I am again. I'm doing it all over again. And, um, you know, I'm going to lose my family. I'm going to lose everything. And I really had to ask myself, man, this isn't this, you know, I, you know, all of a sudden this turns out that it turns out that I'm not who I thought I was. You know what I mean? Because I thought I was successful. I was cool. I was kind of famous. I was fucking killing it. You know what I mean? I was a good dad. I was a good partner. But that was bullshit, man, because that wasn't the case. That wasn't the case. Because although we was only arguing uh, every couple of weeks or every month or whatever, they were big arguments and they were about the same thing over and over again. And ultimately, what is a man if a man's not putting his family first, right? So who do you want to be? So that's who I want to be. And right now I am who I wanted to be and I am who I want to be. But who do you want to be? Who is it that you want to be that you're not now? Now, it might not have anything, that you might not have a family, you know what I mean? But you might be with someone that's making you feel like shit and that's not who you want to be. You might want to be single or you might want to be better at your job. You might want to be healthier. You might want to be sober. Who do you want to be? And write that shit down. So work out what you love, yeah? Work out what you're doing wrong, yeah? Then work out who you want to be. And while you're working out who you want to be, the next one you've got to work out is who don't you want to be? And by that, I mean, who don't you want to end up being? Do you know what I mean? And this is my biggest motivation. I just touched on it earlier. My biggest motivation to becoming a better person and my biggest motivation to um, building myself into the best version of myself that I can be um, and, and trying to minimize those regrets. There's always going to be regrets in the future. But my biggest motivation is who don't I want to be in the future? And I'll tell you who I don't want to be in the future. I don't want to be, like I said earlier, I don't want to be someone that looks back when my kids are 16 and they've seen what, um, how can I put this? I don't want to have shown them what they, they need to accept as a man in their life. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to show them what they need to accept as being a man in their life. I want to show them the fucking high standard of how a man should be. And the only way they're going to see that is not just by how I treat them as a father, but how I treat my wife, right? How I speak to my wife, you know, I buy my wife flowers. I try to buy flowers every week. You know, I'm, I'm romantic to her, you know, um, you know, we talk to each other nicely and obviously we argue like everyone else, but one thing I did not want to be, and this is the key, who don't you want to be? I don't want to be um, a father to two 16-year-old girls that say to their friends, oh, my dad, yeah, you know, he, yeah, he likes to be, he was drunk, he gets drunk most weekends and he's hung over, he didn't really do much of us at the weekends, but he's fun. Nah, fuck that. So who don't you want to be when you're older? Don't, do you want to do you want to be broke when you're older? Do you want to be addicted to drink and drugs? Because although they say in this world that once you're an addict, you're always an addict, and you know that serves people. Uh, and I understand the, the thinking behind that. You know, I'm an addict because it it tells you that you can't control yourself when you drink, and I can't control myself. If I picked up a drink now, I'd go exactly sh straight back to where I was. I'd be on the packet in no time, and I'd be fucking getting on the smash every weekend, right? But 
you 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 can be someone that beat addi- you can be someone that's beating addiction. Do you know what I mean? You can if 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 that's a problem for you, you can be someone that used to look at me, man. I love some, I, I don't mind. I wear my heart on my sleeve, man. And I know a lot of people, um, a lot of people that are in the media or that have got big social media followings or people out there that um. Uh, are famous or whatever they don't like to talk about this stuff because there's a massive taboo around drinking drugs which fucking blows my mind because our industry is my industry tv film whatever is full of it right um but they don't like talking about it because it can ruin job opportunities and being associated with it but i don't give a fuck i don't care because i'm proud man i've got something to give back uh and that can be you too man that's the best thing about having drama in your life so when you're looking for on this point when you're looking forward to thinking who do i want to be yeah you want to be someone that overcome what you're going through now that's the bollocks that's the best fucking thing mate if you've lost your house lost your job if you're out there and you're addicted to drugs or drink or alcohol if you've cheated on your missus and you've broken up your family and or if you if you're sitting there now and someone in your family's died and you can't get over it you're grieving and you're using drink and drugs to cope if if you've whatever is happening to you however bad it is you can either be the person that got over that and you can use that to help other people or or who don't you want to be you don't want to be that guy that's still stuck in it in five years time or ten years time still stuck in it you're still that guy that's going through it you don't have to be that guy that's going through it fuck me mate do you know what i mean (sighs) mate i've been that guy that's going through loads of shit loads of times man from stuff that happened when i was younger to fucking getting bullied to fucking (sighs) do you know what i mean living on my having to move out living on my own when I was younger to fucking losing everything my tv show my house my money my fucking losing everything having to move up north and live with my missus in a fucking spare room in a in the in-law spare room in Manchester with nothing not pot to piss in pregnant missus and a fucking beagle to my father dying to try, having to graft do you know what I mean to being labeled misogynistic and you know, not being able to work, not even being able to do a stand-up show. You know, I've been that guy. I was that guy. You know, I was going through it. You know, I was an addict. I was drinking. I was using drugs to cope. You know, I was going on seshes and and um, coming back and, and, and being in a doghouse and completely messing everything up and the whole world knowing about it. You know, my family, her family, causing problems. I was that guy. Um, but I'm not now because I look forward and thought, who don't I want to be? That's not who I want to be. And now I'm the guy that's overcome that. And I love that. And now I'm here, sat here on a podcast, wherever you are, you're either listening to it or looking at it. And now I'm p- passing on how to change your life to, to, to someone else, hopefully, that's going, not hopefully, but someone else that's going through it. So you can be that. You can you can be sat there talking to someone going, mate, you should have seen the state of me back then. But this is how I overcome it. And I overcome it by working out what I loved, prioritizing it by looking at what I was doing wrong and not lying about it to myself, being fucking brutally honest, because the last person you want to admit is a prick is yourself, but we are. Um, But we don't have to be forever. Um, You know, working out who you want to be um, and then looking at who you don't want to be, man. That's, That's a big one. Who don't you want to be? So that's a big one. Let's move on. This is a massive one for me, man. And I'm spitting some straight facts here. I'm going to have a little sip of my coffee. Hold tight. Mm. And I am actually parched. You're going to think that's weird, coffee in the water. But mm. All right, this is a big one. This is a huge one for me. And um, one that everyone you sh- everyone thinks is bollocks, right? And um, you hear it, you see it on TikTok videos and stuff like this. But this is reality. This is reality for me, man. This, this is... You can't, this, listen, any successful person will tell you this. Anyone that's successful will tell you this. And I'm going to give you some examples as to why I feel like I'm in the position to give this advice to you. But what are you thinking? What are you thinking? What's going on in your mind? Because whatever you think becomes reality, right? It might take fucking years, but whatever you're thinking will become reality. Whatever thinking, whatever thinking is going on in your mind is you know, you've got to remember that you visualize how you see everything is inside your mind, right? How you see yourself, you know, how you picture yourself, you know, how you, how you think other people see you is in your mind. So your own opinion of, on yourself is in your mind, right? And then what you believe other people's opinion of you is in your mind. And also what your opinion of yourself will go into 
you know, what you think other people think of you, because obviously you think they know the truth about you, which is what is the truth about you? It's what you think. Yeah. So ultimately you think whatever you think about yourself, ultimately you are going to think other people think about you. Does that make sense? Because when you think about what other people are thinking about you, you think, oh shit, they know what I'm really like. And what do you think you're really like? Your own opinion of you is what you think you're really like. Now, that probably doesn't seem like it makes sense, but it makes sense to me. So be fucking careful how you talk about yourself. You've got to be real. You've got to look at yourself and you've got to say, this is what I'm doing wrong. But you've also got to put yourself on a pedestal and say, nah, I'm self-confident. I have the ability. Do you know what I mean? I have to work hard. But you've got to be honest with yourself. Things ain't happening for me because I'm not putting enough work into it. Do you know what I mean? The same with my boxing. If I go into boxing and I'm sparring and someone's jabbing my head off, it's, but I know, I know why. He's fitter, he's fitter than me, he's, he's moving quicker than me and he's been doing it longer. Or, you know, he, he's putting more work into it. It's not as simple. It's nice and simple, right? But it goes deeper than that. It's not just about how you think about yourself. It's what are you thinking about? Are you thinking about everything that's going wrong or are you thinking about all the stuff you want to go right? Because I'll tell you how I, I live my life. I live my life every single day focusing on what I want, what I want to happen, what's next. And if you have a look around me, I'm if you're on the YouTube here, I'm surrounded by, and people, my missus takes a piss out of me because it's, my fucking office is like a shrine. I've started putting them up in, in other places around my house. Every film I've done, every stand-up comedy show I've done, every tour I've done, um, you know, I've even got the, the old CDs of my music I used to sell up there. I've got my stand-up comedy DVD. I've got pictures of when I met, met Tyson Fury. I've got a signed glove there. Like I've got the signed poster here of when I when I done stand-up comedy for Tyson Fury at his night with Tyson Fury. Did I say Tyson Fury enough times there? I've got my, my film poster for Fanged Up there. Up here is my film poster for The Last Heist that's just about to go out on Amazon. Um, you know, and uh, up on up on the TV, I've got the uh, the poster for the 28 Date UK tour I've got coming up. Man, these are big fucking things, but these are things that were never achievable originally. They were just fucking ideas in my mind. They were just, I've just finished shooting a feature film, man. Like all of this stuff, they're just ideas in my mind, but I know they're going to happen. I'm telling myself they're going to happen, you know? And the mad thing is the 28 Date UK tour, 10 years it's taken for a promoter to come forward and say to me, do you want to do a UK tour? Nigel, big shout out to you, mate. I love you. And um, that's all through my sobriety, man. I got sober, started up in my game, um, went and done uh, this podcast. This is a true story. Went and done this sobriety podcast. Um, I thought, do you know what? It was, this is how that happened. For the first time in 10 years, for 10 years, I spent 10 years um, begging, borrowing, stealing. I, I, I rented out the fucking Troxy. It was like 30,000 pounds to rent it out. I rent it out and I've, I've fingers crossed that I'd sell enough tickets to pay it off. I managed to, to, to sell it out and I'd done a big show there. I'd done the same with the O2, the Indigo at the O2 uh, last year. Uh, but I couldn't get any tours because in order to do the big tours, you need a promoter that's got a relationship with all of the venues. And many, many venues, I mean, still a couple of venues didn't want me, but many venues just after my last tour got cancelled, after I got thrown off TV, many venues just wouldn't touch me. And listen to this, listen to this. This is karma, baby. This is visualizing what I wanted, right? Uh, and, and karma, this is mixed with karma. But I thought to myself, do you know what? I'm going sober. I need to work on my sobriety before anything else because I feel like. I, I haven't deserved my tour. I haven't deserved these big things that I've been working towards that I felt were stolen away from me. Uh, I haven't deserved them, right? That was the truth. Over the last 10 years, why, why, why would I deserve the universe to give me films, tours, and stuff like that? You know, it, as a comedian, it's my dream, right? Why do I deserve that? Because the truth is, I've just been taking one step forward and two steps back, getting smashed all the time and not really treating the people around me how I should. You know, I looked at what I was doing wrong and uh, that was the karma I was putting out there. And also my social media, um, all my views, videos, likes, comments, it was all at my own personal gain. And I thought, right, I'm going to do my, my journey of sobriety. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to going to create a podcast and I'm going to dedicate doing a podcast a week uh, and share what I learn on this journey, you know, um, I'm going to, it's going to cost, it's cost me money, you know, the studio time, all the equipment, doing all that jazz. 
getting the guests in, everything. And I was like, I'm just going to do it and I'm going to share it and it's going to help. And I'm going to use my social media to share that message. And that was hard because I lost a lot of followers when I initially done it because I've grown the majority of my audience on fucking the sesh video, sesh gremlin and being a geezer and all that jazz, selling beer and fucking everything. But so I done that. I went and got the podcast studio, started the podcast and the producer of the podcast works on GB news. And he said, mate, um, you know what? You'd be brilliant for GB news. He spoke to him there and they got me on GB news to go and uh, do a couple of things on headliners. So suddenly I was on TV again, um, doing some bits on the GB news headliners show, the comedy show. And, um, then this Nigel that, um, knew me from before massive UK comedy promoter. He saw me on GB news and contacted me, got in touch with me and said, listen, it's great to see you back on TV. Uh, I've seen the stuff that you're doing with your sobriety. I think it's a great message. I'd love to have a punt at doing you a tour. And, um, 20,000 ticket tour, 28 dates. We've got about 10,000 tickets left. It doesn't kick off till January. Um, but there you go, man. That's fucking karma, baby. But more importantly, um, that come down to my thinking. What was I thinking? I was thinking, this is all going to happen for me. I was thinking, this is going to happen, right? This is going to happen for me. I've just got to make sure that my karma's right. So, you know, you can't cheat the system, man. This is what I'm saying, saying to you. You've got to work out what you love. You've got to work out what you're doing wrong. You've got to work out who you want to be. You've got to work out who you don't want to be. You've got to right your wrongs. You've got to watch your karma, right? And then you've got to think. Because once you line it all up and you're doing the right thing and your karma's straight, everything's ready for you. The universe is ready for you. Then you've got to think and focus on what you want. What do you want? You've got to think about it. And every time you start thinking about all the stuff that's going wrong in your life, you've got to go, whoa, 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 whoa. Because you're thinking about that, that's going to become your reality. That's the fucking truth, man. You're thinking about it, it's going to become your reality. Every time, everything I'm focusing on, right, listen to this, I'll give you one right now. Right now I'm focusing and I'm thinking about my next film, Sessions. Sessions, right? Just remember me saying that, Sessions. I'm almost finished writing it. I'm going to shoot it alongside a huge actor, massive. And I've pictured a couple of who I think it's going to be. I've visualized it. Um, I'm just going to put the letter S. All right, that's it. You can take that where you want. And yeah, all right. I'm not going to give too much away, but just I'm going to revert back to this one day. I'm going to be doing a massive film, right? It's going to be me alongside another big actor. It's going to be about mental health, suicide, addiction. And what is it going to do for me? I'm going to, I don't know, but I'm going to, I'm visualizing standing up, holding an award for this film and crying. That's, that's my vision. You know, I've never been given like industry appreciation for anything. And I know it's very egotistical, egotistical, but um, I just want my work on sobriety and everything in this film work to come together you know what I mean my work on sobriety mental health well-being my love for film creating writing and filming and shooting I want them to come together and then I want a big platform or an industry thing to make some fuss about it so the whole world sees it and I'm visualizing it so that's that section what are you thinking um yeah, okay, and this is uh, the last two. I've got my little list here. The last two, um, I touched on it before. When is your D-Day? When is your D-Day? When's your D-Day? So when are you, when are you, I'm not talking about when are you invading France. I'm talking about like when, when is this happening? All right, because it's all well and good just thinking it, but you need to fucking, you need to do it, right? And you need to plan it. And you need to change everything. You need to, if you want to change your life, you have to change your routine 110%, right? And this goes into my next one, which is what are your small wins? Because in order to stay motivated on this path of changing your life, you need to feel good, okay? You need to feel like changing your life. You need to feel like these things I'm telling you are working, right? You need to feel good about it. And the only way you feel good and you get that, um, you get that fucking self-love instead of self-loathing. You get that fucking, oh yeah, I'm the geezer or I'm the girl. Or The only way you get that, right, is 
from little wins. You need little wins to mark your progress. See, I'm a firm believer, and I've said this before, that we are, as um, as a species, we're hunters and gatherers from back in the day. You know, we used to be hunting saber-toothed tigers with spears, you know what I mean, catching them. You might be out for a couple of days, and then you see one, boom, or a mammoth or something, bosh, over the head, take it back to the cave. You've got the sweetheart in there, you have a bit of meat, and then she gets some meat, you know what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is... We're hunters and gatherers. We're meant to be chasing something, right? Now, it's all well and good chasing something. Chasing something makes you feel alive, right? But if you don't catch something every now and then, you're just going to end up knackered, yeah, and disappointed. So you've got to catch something every now and then. And the way that you catch something every now and then is you need little wins. And by getting little wins, you need to be also pursuing something achievable while you're pursuing something unachievable. So for me, what, what I deem as not unachievable, but harder to achieve that's a better way of looking at it so you need to be getting those little achievements while those big hard achievements um ain't coming in do you know what i mean because if you're just waiting for the hard achievements 95 percent of the time you're going to be disappointed right you know what i mean i'm talking about the big house the big car the new job they're the hard ones that's the getting more money that's the hard one for me the films you know the tours the fucking you know what i mean they're the hard ones right but the easy ones I like little daily achievements, right? So for me, my little daily achievement are um, getting my workout in. If I've got my workout in, boom, mate, I'm fucking one step ahead of fucking, I don't know how many other people on the planet if I've got my workout in in the morning, right? Another great way of doing this is by picking a uh, picking something that you're really shit at that you want to be good at, right? And working at it, like golf. For me, it's boxing and golf, right? Um I always wanted to be good at golf, but I'm terribly shit at it. I still am. But every now and then, I make a slight little improvement and it's a nice win. Boxing is a great one. You could do running, cycling. I don't care if you're what, what you're into. It could be fucking knitting. Um, could be anything. Could be fucking origami or jujitsu. Could be windsurfing or fucking wall climbing. Well, I don't know what it is. You know out there, right, right now, think about it, visualize it. What would you love to be good at? Everyone's different. Everyone's weird. Um, I climbed a mountain. Fucking, that was the bollocks, you know. I'd like to be a bit better at that. What would you like to be good at that you can work at every couple of days or at least once a week? Yeah? Work out what that is. One, it would become an amazing distraction um, from, from, from any negative things that you're trying to change. You know, we can go back down on the list. What are you doing wrong? Have a look at that. Slip this in to fill the gap, right? And start getting those little wins. What do you want to do? You want to become something. You want to learn something. Get those little wins. Those little wins will see you through to when the big ones come, as long as you're visualizing. So let's do a little recap for you, baby. 40 minutes, and I feel like I've spoken some sense today. Focus on what you love. That's number one. Number two, be honest about your faults. Number three, picture who you want to be and picture who you don't want to be. Number four, control and manage your thoughts. That's a fucking big one. Number five, decide when you're going to change and start it with your morning routine. Number six, focus on the small wins. They get you by. Woo! My God, I don't know if I'm just chatting complete and utter bollocks here or if I truly am developing into, <sighs> mate, I must be, man. The amount of books I've read, the amount of people I've spoken to on the podcast, the amount of counselling sessions I've had and the amount of, I think, honestly, the amount of, look. oh, mate, it makes me feel a bit emotional, actually. Mate, it's the amount of looking inside myself, um, you know, looking at the darkness as well as the light is, um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing, man. Personal development. It's a beautiful thing. You've got to be aggressive about it. But, you know, I've, look, there's like this weekend, like I said, I'm on my last, I don't know if I said it on my last podcast, but, you know, having a happy family around me this weekend and having me shirt off and not looking like a big fat bastard and, um, not drinking, being present, getting loads of work done. It's just, it feels good. It's a good vibe. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. That was How to Change Your Life uh, by Daniel O'Reilly. Please let me know if any of that connected with you. Let me know if you're enjoying these more sort of intimate at-home podcasts. Let me know if you're still listening um, 
on your car journeys, if I'm still part of your routine, if wherever you are, if you're listening to this, um, because since I stopped doing the guest, I was a little bit nervous that, uh, you know, people would lose interest. Let me know you're still interested. Uh, let me know in the comments on the YouTube or in my DMs on my Instagram. And let me know if me sharing what I'm learning is helping any of you out there. And uh, I hope it's not condescending uh, to do a podcast about how to change your life. But this is coming from someone that was fucking up bad and that's fucked up many, many times. And that now has swapped shame and guilt for pride and progress. And it feels really good. And um, there's we're losing too many men to suicide because of shame. Um, and um, too many women... Um, as well, you know, just to, 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 to lack of progress for everyone, you know, um, I always focus on the men just because I'm talking from experience, but, um, listen, your life right now is not set in stone. That's all I'm going to say. The world is out there, right? And it's a compounding effect, you know, little changes, tiny little changes every day will add up to fucking feeling good, man. I, 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 I spend, I still have my down days. I'm still up and down. I'm not going to lie to you, but I spend majority of my time wandering around going, fucking, how did this happen? I'm actually feeling all right. Things are fucking happening and people are proud of me and that's where I want you to be. Um, but more importantly, and I'm going to finish this on this, I want you to love yourself and I want you to be proud of yourself because I know exactly how it feels to sit on your own and go over and over all the stupid things you've done or the things you haven't managed to done or the things you've got wrong. Um, and remember what I said, how you view yourself, yeah, is what you think other people view of you as well. And it's going to become your reality. So you have to start being good to yourself, but you can't lie to yourself. You've got to make a few changes and then you've got to start talking to yourself in a good way. Treat yourself like you treat other people. It's mad, isn't it, that most of the time, we treat ourselves, no, we treat ourselves, we'd never dream of treating other people the way we treat ourselves. That's fact. Right? How to change your life. It's time to learn to love yourself again. Let's go on this journey together, baby. Whoever you are, whatever you're going through, leave me a comment. Let me know if this connected. Menace to Sobriety. Share it. Pass it on. Tag someone. Send a link to someone and just say, have a little listen to this. I love you. Learn to love yourself. Peace. Oh, yes. And don't forget, if you want to come and see me live and meet me, I'm going on tour. The Daniel O'Reilly Out of Character Full UK Tour kicks off in January 2024 and tickets are on sale right now. I'm going to try and get out and meet as many of you as possible. And of course, I'm going to be bringing the laughs all over the UK. There's 23 dates right now and I'm adding more all the time. Hit the link in the bio and get your tickets now and come have some fun. If you're going through a tough time at the moment, please don't suffer in silence. Feel free to pick up the phone and contact any of these helplines. I personally, myself, at one of my darkest points, contacted the Samaritans and it completely changed my outlook and got me out of a really deep, dark place. A problem shared really is a problem halved. So if you don't feel confident talking to those around you, check out any of these organizations and give them a call. This is my Facebook group, just simply search on Facebook, Men and Their Emotions. It's for men only, uh, but once you're in there, you can talk anonymously about your problems and help others and just feel a little bit of community. So come join the conversation, Men and Their Emotions, on Facebook. Thanks for watching. Menace of sobriety. Just a menace. Just, just a menace. Just a menace. Menace of sobriety. Just a menace. Just, just a menace.